Hey, what up, everybody? Corey Taylor here, and you are watching Loudwire. I think you've done a lot of really good things for the mental health community, uh, just as a spokesperson. Uh, and one thing that's really been bothering me online is to see people calling Chris Cornell and Chester Bennington cowards. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's... And I wanted to get your opinion on that because I like what you did with the UROC Foundation. I like what you did uh, talking with a therapist yeah. on Viceland. Yeah. Uh, so I, I want to hear your voice on this. Uh, calling them cowards is a very immature way of looking at it. Um, obviously, they're hurt, which is why they're lashing out and saying that. Um, it's, it's the easy way to look at something like that because it, it, it makes you not have to face what a serious issue it is. It's, it's easy for someone to label it like that so they can turn their back on it and pretend that it was something that didn't happen to them, you know, when inside they're hurting, you know, people who fight depression are almost in a constant state of hurting you know sure like it, it comes and goes you know the tide rises the tide ebbs and sometimes it's, it's hard to it's hard to get you know past that break so i i think people need to realize that not only are not only is that immature but it's also a cop-out and it's it's needlessly needlessly simplifying a very real issue and a, an issue that might have a lot to do with a lot of the other issues that are going on in our country right now whether it's suicide or the opioid problem that's going on right now people don't want to feel why do they not want to feel let's get to the bottom of that let's get to the bottom of why there is a rise in not only PTSD but severe depression across the board. I mean, I suffer from manic depression, which means I rise and fall, I crash and I burn. I've got the practice and I've got the, the people to talk to so I can keep myself from really breaking myself against the, that wall. But it's, it's tough, man. It's tough. And some people don't have that luxury. Some people, like our friends, the wall pushes back. And it is a goddamn tragedy that does not make them cowards. And I've even heard people recently say something to the fact of it was bound to happen. It was, this was always going to happen. And I've gotten so angry hearing that, that I have gone on record as saying that, that you are absolutely wrong for saying that. No one, the, the, the suicide should not be a foregone conclusion. That means you're not listening. You say you care about that person, that means you're not listening. So I'm listening. So I'm doing everything I can to make sure that people know that there are people out there to listening, that there are places to go, whether it's a friend or a stranger. There are organizations, there are centers, there are people who have dedicated to listening. Because sometimes that's all you need is just someone to listen. You just need to tap that valve. It, it, it's not going to change the severity of it, but it's going to help you feel a little better. It will take away that solitary confinement. It will take away that sense that you're alone. You're not. You're not alone. Not one person out there who feels that way is alone. I feel it. I'm sure you know people who feel it or you feel it. You're not alone. And it is important for people to know that. You're not a coward. You're, just, you're not alone. Get the help you need. There are ways to find it. And I'm sure we can put some information on a bunch of different uh, organizations who can help you.